Hey there YouTube, Arvin69 here. Well, following on from the unboxing video I did recently on the Creality LD002H, this is going to be looking at the initial setup of this printer. Now, before we get into it, we're going to talk about safety first. Working with resin is a nasty chemical. You do not want this on your hands and it has an odour. You need to work in a well-ventilated area. So if there's an echo on my microphone, that's because we're in a new location today. This is a room in my house that is not used very often and this is going to be where the printers are housed for run resin printing. I can open the window in here, I can shut the door in here and have this as a contained room with nice ventilation in it and nobody needs to interfere with these printers or come in while they are printing. The other thing you need to be concerned about, you will need gloves. Um, I couldn't get any, well I couldn't get anything other than um, latex gloves at the time of buying the printer. So I've got a box of 100 latex gloves. Always wear these when dealing with the resin. You do not want the resin on your hands. If you do get any on your hands, wash them immediately. This stuff can be nasty uh, with prolonged exposure. Um, so please be careful with it. And the other thing to note, finally, before we get into this, I've got my printer sat on metal trays. Um, I wanna get some uh, Wam Bam silicon mats, slap mats, if I can get them. They're all out of stock at the moment. So to try and contain everything, I've got some old um, trays from an old oven. Um, these are quite deep, they've got a nice lip on them. So if anything spills, it keeps contained within these trays underneath the printers and I can clean it up. Because the last thing you want is resin, resin spilling all over your house. So with that out of the way, we're gonna take a look at setting up this printer for the first time. Now, I've already printed some upgrades for my printer. Um, namely, I've got a resin vat cover that sits over the actual vat itself, and I'll put a link for this one down below. I've also got an additional bracket that goes onto the actual um, print bed itself, and I'll show you how this works in a second. This allows me to um, suspend the tray inside the printer and allow any excess resin to drip off back into the vat. So why don't we get a closer look at the printer and we'll look at leveling it and exposing the screen for the first time. So when your printer arrives from shipping, um, the instructions tell you that it is already pre-leveled. Um, I'm not going to trust that with it being jostled in the post, etc. I'm going to re-level mine and we'll go through that in a second. But the first thing we need to do is remove the vat by undoing the screw here and here. With those off, the vat just lifts up and the screws, as I said before, stay intact on the actual thing, the trim. And under here, there is a protected film on the actual screen, so we need to go ahead and peel this off and that exposes our screen. Now, to level the actual um, print bed, we need to home it down, undo four screws on here, um, and then get this set. We'll go through the process in a second. However, never ever level the bed directly onto the screen. Either put a piece of paper on there, or put your vat back on again, and level it through the FEP screen, which is what I'm going to do. So, we'll get that seated, like so. Um, screw it back down again. I'm going to get the Allen key that came with the actual printer itself and undo these four screws, which are extremely tight actually. There we go, one. So with all four um, Allen key screws loosened, the bill plate now moves up and down, doesn't have a lot of lateral movement and can rock forwards and backwards. So if we turn the printer on, there we go, we go into the tool menu, we go into manual and home the print bed. This will lower it down into the vat and then let it settle. Now it's worth mentioning that I've already turned off the speaker on this because it does beep a lot at you and it is extremely loud. So there we are, that's the um, print head now lowered into the actual vat. So if we just put our hand on the top and gently press down and while we're pressing, We'll just tighten up the Allen keys. Now it's best to tighten them in opposite corners to keep the tension even all the way around. So I will go ahead and do that now. Tighten 
tighten that one up. Then once you've got them all um, tightened, um, just slightly tightened, go around and tighten them all up fully. So with the print head now homed, if we move it up by 10 millimeters, and up again, and we move it up once more, and then we shall rehome it, and it should home perfectly this time. There we are, perfectly homed. So once you've leveled the bill plate, there isn't much to it on this. Um, these systems are a lot simpler than setting up an FDM printer where you've got to level the print bed at multiple points. It's just drop it in, get it leveled, you're good to go. Most of the configuration is actually done in the slicing software. But before we go into a couple more features on the printer itself, um, we've got a build volume of 130 by 160 by 82 millimeters. Um, the screen that this one uses is a 2K monochrome um, LCD screen with a resolution of 1620 by 256 and these are upgraded features from the LD002R. Slightly bigger build volume and I mean slightly bigger by about 10 mil and the screen is the main changing feature. There is a small fan at the back there that runs constantly and that is supposed to have carbon filtration in to help eliminate the orders. I'm yet to see how well that does. So a couple of other things to look at on here is we can have a look at the calibrate calibration of the screen. It's set to 15 seconds. Um, I'll drop it down to four because I don't need on very long. Um, once you hit next, it illuminates the screen in a certain pattern and you get to look at that screen and see if there's any dead pixels. So the screen looks a bit like that is what the pattern it's exposing. And that's the pattern you can see on the top. So we'll take a closer look inside the vat. So we can see inside the vat and if I run the same screen calibration again, we'll see this light up. There we are and it runs the test pattern so you can see, and the screen looks good to me. And the other function just to mention on here is the clean vat. So if you have been printing and you've got resin that has dropped um, into the vat when you've finished or the model broke part way through and you've stopped it, once you've removed it off the build plate itself, you can run clean vat. I'll drop that down to four seconds because I don't really need to expose anything, but that will illuminate the entire build plate, sorry, the entire screen um, and cure the entire bottom layer. Then once it's done, you can get the included plastic scraper that comes with it and use this to scrape off the resin from the bottom of the FEP sheet. Don't use the metal one on the FEP sheet, you will ruin it. Always use the plastic one. This is used to get builds off the actual build plate itself. Now onto the additional printed mods that I did for this printer. As I said, we've got um, a cover for the vat. So if you are not going to be using it for a couple of hours and you want to be make sure that your resin doesn't cure just to be on the safe side, undo the screws on the vat, lift that one up and there's notches on the side of the actual um, cover, slide it underneath, lift the screw up, slide it under and that just sits on top of the vat like so and just stops any more light getting into the actual vat to keep your resin safe and secure. Also helps to keep any particles off the FEP sheet. The other upgrade I printed was this, and again, like I said, I'll put all the links to these down below. This, if you take your build plate off, this pops on with the flat part just here, sliding into this gap here, like so. Push it over the top, so when your build plate is connected, it still connects to the metal, like that, and still works as functioned as normal. I'll just raise the camera up so you can actually see the top of it. There we go, that's better. So it fits on just to the top there. However, once you finish printing, you can take it off, turn it round, slot it on the side, lock it back in again, and that then holds the print head, sorry, the print bed, at an angle and allows the resin to drip back into the tray that might have built up on the plate over time while you've been printing. Once you've finished, you can remove it from there and then continue on to the wash station and wash and cure your model, but we'll come to that later for washing and curing. And that about wraps up everything for the initial setup stages of getting your printer prepped, ready for running your first print. Now in the next video, I'm gonna look at how you use Chitu Box to 
calibrate for your resin that you'll be using on the printer and how you tell when you've got your resin and your exposure settings dialed in to make sure that everything will print fine. And then after that, we'll look at running some prints. And then hopefully down the line, we're gonna look at Chitu Box in depth and explore all the features of the software because it is quite confusing coming from FDM and using things like Prusa Slicer, Cura and Simplify 3D. So if you enjoy the video, you found it useful, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave me a comment below, ask me any questions, I'll do what I can to answer. And until next time, take care.